First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. Turn there. I'm going to make you do it. There. Can you read that? I'll turn there too. Let me just ask very quickly, raise your hand, if God showed you something this week in the Word that really blessed you, you never knew it before, or it just sent tinglings in the back of your neck. It got, okay? Now, I'm not trying to say, well, you're better than everybody else is, because I don't, I don't do that. But I want to encourage you, read your Bible. Don't just, you've heard my phrase, uh, the, past, the church welfare program where the pastor reads all the Bible for you and gives it to you, okay? Read it yourself. That's your vineyard. Don't be slothful with it, amen? Uh, so anyway, um, where was I going with that? My mind is just, I'm just like forgetting everything I'm saying today. Anyway, go to the scriptures, and I'll work, we'll work our way out of it. First so, Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, think about that, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word of God, okay, um, that you may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Who in here has tasted that the Lord is gracious? Okay? He has been. The Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God tells him in Malachi. He's talking about tithing. And he's not, he's not threatening them so much as he is encouraging them. He says, Go ahead and tithe and see what I'll do after that. See if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour blessings out to you. Now, God did not anywhere in that passage say... That if you paid tithes, God was going to give you more money. He never said that. I don't want money as much as I want God's heavenly blessings to come down on me. And enrich my life even if it's without money. Can I hear somebody say amen? Okay. But anyway, we need to grow thereby. If so be if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as unto a living stone. Think about that. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Underline that. We know in 2 Thessalonians 2 that God is going to send a strong delusion. Do we not? Okay. Who in here has heard of that Mandela effect? A guy sent me an email and it had a document attached to it. And it was put out by some group. They've got a website and they've got all these YouTube videos. They actually believe that somebody from the Illuminati has been going back in time, changing history, and you and I are now in this alternate history, or this alternate universe, where history's been changed, but we still have a piece of our mind left from the other universe that we detect things from the other universe that were right there but are not the same here, and they do it to the Bible. So the guy sent me, the whole King James Bible, and where these people submitted changes to verses in the King James because they remember in the alternate reality that it used to say something else. I'll give you an example. The main one is, you've heard the verse where the lion shall lay down with the lamb. Right? It's not in the Bible, Wayne. It's not in the Bible. The King, the King James Bible, Isaiah says, the wolf shall lay down with the lamb. But then you've got the Mandela people who believe that somebody went back in history, altered that word in the King James Bible from wolf or from lion to wolf. But everybody has this remembrance of how it was in the other alternative universe. 
So what they did was they sent, this guy sent me, and he was, he was like me. He's going, this is nonsense. But I'm reading through their changed King James Bible, and I'm just getting my blood is boiling. Because people actually fall for this. People watch YouTube videos, Facebook posts, blog posts that are telling everybody that history has been changed. The way you remember things are, is not the way things are now. I want to tell you something. That is what I call a weak delusion. Anybody with a brain, anybody with common sense will tell you it's, it didn't happen. That's goofy. Okay? And if people are going to fall for something that simple, and that, I'm going to use the word stupid because that's what it is. If people are going to fall for something that stupid, they will not stand a chance against God's strong delusion. Because that's an easy one. Okay? And I'll probably, you know me, he sent me the ammunition. Okay? Which was their notes in that King James Bible. So, you're going to see me firing away at some point. I'm going to read through it and spend some time with it. But, anyway, this, this thing is nuts. Okay? Uh, now, the, all that had a really, really good... Oh, on him, he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Him, he's talking about, number one, is the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's also talking about, when you talk about Jesus, you are talking about the Word of God, because that's who he is. He is the Word. He is the Word of God. He is the, the angel of the Lord. He's all these things. And if we will believe, if we will base our thoughts, our ideas, our conspiracy theories on the Word of God as being absolute truth, we will not be confounded. We will not be part of the falling away and the great deception that's coming. We will not be part of that. God will make sure of it. God Did God make sure that Noah and all the animals was in that ark? They didn't miss anything. The angels came to get Lot and his family out. Now half his family didn't want to go out, so he got left there. But Lot and his daughters were able to escape because God knows how to save people. God knows how, in all the things that you're reading in the Bible, all the things you're hearing from the Word of God, they may not make sense today, but I promise you, there's going to be an issue of life that's going to raise up, and all of a sudden a verse is going to come to your Holy Ghost is going to say, you remember that verse? Now here's what it means. Okay? And then you know that you're a child of God because God's dealing with you that way. But I'm telling you people, and, I, and a lot of people online, because there's so much junk online. Please, if it's an issue with you, turn your YouTube deal off. Quit watching that stuff. Get your Bible out and read it and let God make it so that you are not confounded. Amen? Verse 7. And you therefore which believe he's precious. Amen. That, he's used that uh, thing up here before. Uh, verse 6, Wherefore it also is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect precious. So then he says, Unto you therefore which believe, He is precious. My God is precious to me. My Savior is precious to me. My Bible is precious to me. Okay? I will not give up my Bible. I will not give up my Bible. I'd rather be dead than to lose my Bible. Amen? That's just how precious this thing is to me. Let me ask you this. Are, are your grandkids precious to you? George, grandkids precious to you? Did you take a bullet for them? Absolutely. When it comes to people that we love, we don't think of ourselves first. Okay? Rose, several years ago, we had a guy come, Rose knew who it was, um, to kind of go through our church and give us some ideas on church security. And he was examining this area here, and he looked at the stage, and he said, where's, where's that door there go to? And he says, well, it goes behind here and uh, downstairs. So he told me, he said, Pastor, if anybody comes in here with a gun, then you are, have the ability to run through that door and be safe. I said, sir, with all due respect, if somebody comes in here with a gun, I'm not gonna leave running out of here like a little girl screaming 
I'm going to run and jump in front of my wife and my kids as much as I am able to because I do not want anybody to harm my family. They are precious to me. Likewise, my Jesus is precious to me. He not only saved me, but he saved me in every way possible. Jesus Christ has saved me. This Bible does not ever get old in my mind. I always want to read it. Sometimes I don't, but I always want to. I always want to learn something. I always want to see something brand new. Why? So I can tell everybody else. That's why I want to do it. So I can proclaim it. Okay? I want to proclaim what I know. And the more I know, the more I'm able to proclaim it. The, all of these things are precious to me. And I'm not going to let them go. So uh, to, unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient. The stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. That is not a capstone on a pyramid. It's not. The head of the corner is a corner stone. The corner stone sets the angles of that, of that building. Because that, that corner stone is... I guess, I don't know, level across the bottom, level across the top, level down both sides, and it establishes a 90 degree angle for the walls. Once you set that one stone in place, you build the two walls out from it, and then on the other corner you do the same thing. You're setting cornerstones there. That determines whether or not that house is going to stand or it's going to fall. And Christ is that chief cornerstone. Not at the capstone on your dollar bill, but he's down here. He's the one, he's the rock that we're on, that we're built on. Amen? So you just, I like that part. But the builders now are rejecting that. You have church after church. Um, the Krons from, uh, I guess, I think it was you guys. I didn't get a chance to read all your email. But they're having problems because they're having to tell some of their closest friends. Well, you know what? I better not say that because I don't know if they gave me permission to do it. What I'm, what I'm telling you is, you stand on this book, you don't walk away from it. Okay? That book and this word is precious to us. And while all of these churches and these denominations and ministries are building their house without that chief cornerstone because they rejected it. They rejected the pure and the true plumb line. They rejected the measure, the scales. They rejected um, the balance. They rejected the, the bubble level. They've rejected the standards for God's kingdom. They've walked away from that. And they, dis, they disallowed it. They said, we don't want that. We don't want Jesus. We don't want the word of God. We're going to build it on something else. So unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. It won't be tonight, though. But let me explain to you what that means a little bit. My, there's probably many applications of this. But what I've got right now is stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. There are in your Bibles stumbling stone verses. There are verses that look like they're wrong. Look like they're a mistake. There are verses in your Bible where you read it and say, Oh no, I remember that verse as saying something else a long time ago. I think somebody went back and changed the Bible. Okay? That Bible is right. What's the rules? Two rules. Number one, no mistakes in the Bible. Rule number two, think we found one? No, there's no mistakes in the Bible. To those who are disobedient, they reject that chief cornerstone. And the King James now is a rock of offense to them. It's funny to hear the liberals all over this country talk about being tolerant of everybody, but the truth is they're tolerant of everybody that agrees with them on everything. But they're definitely not tolerant of born-again, Bible-believing Christians. Okay? Likewise, these ministers say, I believe we use all the translations. But you bring a King James, and you mention King James, you will see these people's visage change. There is a spirit in them that hates this book. There's a lion that roars 
when this book comes out. Okay? And I'm just telling you, that's the stone that they rejected. It's a rock of offense. So, these guys like to point out this, what they call discrepancies between the accounts in First and Second Kings and the accounts in First and Second Chronicles. And they say, see, there are mistakes in those manuscripts. Mistakes crept in. Therefore, we do not have the infallible Word of God today. It has errors in it. And it's been that way for a long time. That is a lie. It is an absolute. I can show it to you in Scripture that that's a lie. God pro I just got through this. God promised that His Word would be incorruptible. Amen? And yet, they're building churches, they're building denominations, they're building ministries on something other than the Word of God. They are disobedient to this, and God is going to cast them out, and I believe He's going to cast them in outer darkness, He's going to be weeping and gnashing with teeth. So He said to verse, uh, to, to the word to the altar point, verse 9, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Let's count. Number one, you're a chosen generation. Number two, royal priesthood. Number three, a holy nation. Number four, peculiar people. The four things here, Matthew, Mark. How do we get to be that? Four Gospels, Matthew, Mark. Isn't that neat? You used to be on the other side of this, didn't you? And Christ died to make you so that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I want to encourage you to do something. Okay? I'm going to challenge you to do something. And I'm just, going to, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. Who in here is really, really comfortable with approaching a perfect stranger with the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I mean just letting them, letting them have it in a nice way. But just, sir, I'd like to talk to you about your soul. I want to talk, let me show you some verses out of the Bible. I want to show you how you can be saved. Who in here is really comfortable with that? Raise your hand. You've done it before, okay? Two people. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it. I don't do well with it, okay? For, and I used to not be this way. But I don't know, something's wrong in my head somewhere. And I just, I can't do that. So what I can do, I do. I try to do as much of it as I can. That is what I'm doing now, what I do upstairs. Okay? And if you find that you're not as good as Heather is, or Melissa, at just walking up perfect strangers, let me tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have thousands of DVDs back there. Pass them out. Give them away. I've told you this story. Got in a laundromat, folding his clothes, saw these DVDs on the table. I don't, this guy lives, I don't know where he lives, way far from here. Mike Hoggart was the name on there. He had never heard of Mike Hoggart. So on his way out, he decided to, to just pick one of the DVDs. They were free, and he knew it. So he just kind of looks at the table real quick and gets one. I don't know which one it was. He, he called me, and he said, I went home. I watched it. I went back to the laundromat to make sure they were still there, and I got every one of them that was left. And he said, I binge watched all of those DVDs. I could not get enough of them. Okay? Now, you guys know me. That's not Mike Hoggard boasting. Okay? Because that was God that did that. I didn't have anything to do with it. I was all alone in my little green room up there talking to my camera, and as far as I was concerned, that was the extent of it. God is the one who brings the increase. Amen? But this man called me and said, I, I was a Roman Catholic. My family's Roman Catholic. But I'm telling you right now, God has saved me by His grace. And I believe the Bible is the Word of God and I believe it's true. Okay? Things like that, God is always in charge of that. Okay? Plant the seed, people. Plant the seed. God will bring the increase. And you know what? You may not see on this side of Jordan those people who asked Jesus into their heart as a result of what you did. But you'll see them when we get there. Okay? Jesus come to you and say, uh, Melissa, let me introduce you to about 10,000 people. Because you gave out DVDs and one guy got saved 
and then he got excited, and he talked to a bunch of others, and they all got excited. And before long, what you did, you did this one thing, and now ten thousand people are in heaven because of this one thing. And I'm gonna, and by the way, we have eternity, so take your time getting to know him. Okay, don't rush. How many of you would like for God to use you that way? I remember sitting out in the parking lot, one of the worst days of my life, bawling my eyes out, asking God, God, will you just use me? Will you just help me and let me be a blessing to people? And God has answered that prayer in a way that I could have never, never understood, never dreamed. Okay? And you guys also know my heart. I do not exclude this church and what you guys represent from what God is doing through me. The day that I was told that I would have to leave this church in order to be successful in that ministry. And I went, nah, I don't think so. Okay? Anyway, you're a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. It's the gospels that did that in you. You did not do it yourself. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you're happy and you know it, you can do more than say amen. Okay? You can proclaim to others what God has done for you. Amen? Verse 10, which in time past were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I want to go back to... Uh, it's almost 8 o'clock, but I'm, I'm fixing to now, just now get the message going here. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, Wherefore, laying all aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Has anybody ever considered the meaning of this? I mean, it's pretty simple. It is a mother nursing a newborn. Okay? Newborns, and let me just kind of run through this very quickly. That, that first milk that comes out of that mother is called colostrum. And it's loaded with antibodies. It's loaded with the things that will protect that child because at that young age, that child's immu uh, immune system is not developed enough to fight off its own diseases. So the first few days of a newborn baby's life and existence is very critical. And they must receive that colostrum from the mother. God designed it so that, and it's not just in human women either, it's in the animal kingdom as well. All mammals, okay, all mammals, females, have that same thing where they produce colostrum for the newborn calves, newborn whatever it is, newborn pigs, so that disease does not immediately destroy. Remember what is Satan doing there in Revelation chapter 12? The woman's going to give birth, and what's the dragon doing there? He's waiting to devour that child as soon as it's born. Can I tell you something that I know about you? There's no doubt in my mind that the devil tried to devour you in your young life. Raise your hand. I think he saw something. A threat to his kingdom. Isn't it good that you're a threat to his kingdom? And the devil tried to stop you from doing it. Okay? And God wouldn't let him. Amen. Okay? Anyway, we have obtained mercy. Now, milk, as I said, it starts out as colostrum. Then it changes over and it's got all these fats in it. That's why babies are nice and cute and chunky. Amen? Because they're drinking fat all day long. Okay? It's got... Um, what is that? Uh, lactose. The form of sugar called lactose. Because that baby needs that sugar from that milk. It needs that sugar in there for its cells to be able to grow, multiply, and produce energy. It needs it. Okay? But we all know, we've seen it happen over a time then, that child no longer just is satisfied with the milk of the word. Now let me stop right here for a minute. Way too many church members are still sucking milk. They are spiritual babes and they have been that way for years. Which means they have carefully 
chosen the church that they go to. A church that will not deliver meat of the Word of God, but will only give that good, sweet, fat milk for babies. And the babies just suck it all up. And to them, they say, we don't want any more than that. And by and large, God says, fine, I'm not going to give it to you. Okay? That's the importance of it. At some point, you grow up out of the sincere milk and you get ready to chew on some meat because that's going to sustain you longer. What Lisa and I found out about having babies in the middle of the night was the quicker you can get solid food in their stomach, the better your chances of sleeping at night. Amen? And the pediatrician always said, oh, you're giving them, you're giving them solid food way too soon. And we're going, no, we're not. No, no, we, we wait till 9 o'clock. We don't rush it. Okay? But anyway, let's look at milk in the Bible. Milk is a picture of the Word of God. Because that's what he said. Desire sincere milk of the sincere milk of the Word of God. Okay? That's it. So milk is a symbol of the Word of God. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good land and a large unto a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. And the, under the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and Jebusites. Can I submit to you that a church should be Canaan land in that the, out of every church should be a river flowing with milk and honey? Milk being a picture of the, of the nutrients of the Word of God. Honey being a picture of the sweetness of the Word of God. You need that milk, you need that protein, you need that calcium, but you need that sugar as well. And, and honey is, in my opinion, the best place in the world to get sugar. Amen? Amen. Keep puking bees. Keep puking that stuff up. Amen. Because that's what they do. But anyway, the idea of a land flowing with milk and honey was God put it in your heart. John, God put it in your heart to seek out a land, a church, where the milk was going to flow. Yeah, I know him. How many times in the Bible did God tell Israel that Canaan land was a land flowing with milk and honey? You remember what the, the spies came back and said? Surely it is. God wasn't kidding. That land literally flows with milk and honey. But there's giants there. We can't go in there. God says, fine, you're not going. Okay? So milk equals the Word of God. Uh, turn to 1 Corinthians. And then Hebrews 5. 1 Corinthians 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Now, I will say that even if you have matured in some areas of Christianity. I would still say that probably a lot of Christians still have some of that baby tendencies in them where some things just don't make sense. And they need the milk portion of what God's teaching them before they can handle the meat portion of God. What God's, how many of you understand what I'm saying? Okay. I've been fight. I don't know what it is, but I'm fighting my mind, staying focused tonight. Okay, so slap me around a little. No, don't. Okay. But in, what was I saying now? What was I saying? The milk. I know I was talking about milk. Yeah, there may be issues in your life where you don't understand how God, why God does this, or why God does that. In those cases, you might still need the milk to start out with. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay? Especially when it comes to new converts. There is a critical time in a convert's life that a lot of things need to be done for them. And we should treat them as we treat little babies. There are things little babies cannot do that you and I do all the time. They, they can't go potty like we do. They can't eat things like we do. They can't stand like we do. And so it is wrong. And I've seen it happen. 
I've seen it happen in this church, although not in a long time. It is wrong to take in converts and immediately demand that they follow all of your standards and your church rules. And even demand that they follow everything out of the scriptures. Give them milk first. Let them, let them grow and get fat. Let them get their bones strengthened. Let them get used to using those muscles. Let them get used to, let, them, let their brains grow a little bit. Let them grow. Because after all, that's what God did for you, did he not? God did a pretty good job taking care of you. Hebrews 5.11, turn there. 5.11 Of whom you have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. In a family, mom and dad have several children, and then the newborn child comes, mom and dad sets the table for the supper, evening meal, and there's fried chicken and cornbread and mashed potatoes and gravy and beans and all that good stuff on the table. But the baby cannot eat that. The baby needs milk. As it would be wrong for the pastor or for that dad or, and mom to try to force all the other children to eat the milk that the baby is eating, it would also be wrong to force the baby to eat the cornbread and the chicken that the older children and the adults are eating. How many of you agree with that? Say amen. Okay? Common core. Have you heard of that? The common core education system is new age to the core. And it dumbs down the educational system. It takes the top students and brings them down deliberately to a lower level so that the lesser students won't feel bad about themselves. And they want everybody's education and their grades to be common. Some people just need more time to grow up. But not everybody's the same. So a good set of parents will provide meals for both all of the children plus the baby. And they'll understand the two. A good pastor, a good church, a good church ministry understands that not everybody that comes to the church has the same kind of understanding as do others. And I must be patient in teaching them. But I also can't neglect the older Christians and giving them meat as well. You see what I'm saying? These new churches now, all they're doing is giving out milk. But they're giving milk to people who are starving to death for meat. And they're not giving them any meat. I get those phone calls all the time. Pastor... Yeah, we tried this church over here. We've there for a long time, but it just seemed like all we got was these little milk sermons. And you know, we, 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 we agree with a lot of it, but it's, we're wanting something deeper from the Word of God. Okay, that's why they come. So anyway, but strong meat belongs to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their, ex, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Babes can't do that. Babes cannot discern between good and evil. And they're things that they cannot do. So we cannot expect them to do it until they start growing. And the only way that they can grow is for them to get into the Word of God and for that church to make sure that when they have services, it's the Word of God, not anything else. Amen? One more. I turn to Isaiah chapter 60. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I say one more. I want two more. Okay? Two more. Isaiah 60. Because I've got to show you, you're going to like this, okay? It's body typology. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. This is to Israel. God is promising Israel that he is going to bring them their light, and that light was Christ. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So God's making a promise to Israel. But notice what he said in verse 16. Thou, all, thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shalt 
uh, suck the breasts of kings, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord and Savior, thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. You have a picture of a Bible up there. It's called a King James Bible. You know what it is? It's the milk of the Gentiles. There were no Jewish scholars in on the translation of the 1611 King James Bible. They were all Gentile men. And this Bible you have is the milk of the Gentiles. That's what I believe. And you know what's going to happen? Israel, God's going to open their eyes to it and they're going to read it. Okay? Because God is going to... Listen, I promise you. God is going to use and is using the Gentiles right now to provoke Israel to jealousy. Just like Esau was with Jacob. Okay? And how much more of an offense would it be to the Jews where God put his, the beauty of his son, Jesus Christ, not plainly read in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, which is for the Gentiles. Okay? They're going to suck the milk of the Gentiles. And God's going to save them. Amen? One more thing, I'll let you go. Turn to Isaiah 66. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say some things. Please don't think I'm trying to be vulgar. Okay? And I'm going to give you the G version of this. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall the nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? saith the Lord, will I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be, be glad with her, all you that love her. Rejoice for uh, joy with her, all you that mourn for her. Verse 11, that you may suck and be satisfied with the breaths of her consolation, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, there is peace like a river. Amen? Yes. And the glory of the... Watch this. And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Who's the glory of the Gentiles? Jesus Christ and His Word. That's the flowing stream. Okay? Then shall you suck... And you shall, watch this. You shall be born upon her sides. How many sides? Two. And dandled upon her knees. How many knees? Two. Okay? Now, um, let's, let me finish reading this. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Now, you listen to me. Okay, again, I'm not going to be vulgar in this. But a child who is nursing, it is often that that child will want to nurse even if they're not that hungry. But what they want is the comfort that comes to a baby being nursed by his mother. They want that comfort. Now, you're supposed to think Bible on this. Sometimes I'm not reading the scriptures to come up with some great super sermon. Sometimes I just need the comfort. How many breasts does a lady have? Old Testament, New Testament. And it's something. And a baby doesn't care which one he's feeding out of. Same milk, same life, same grace. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Ladies, God designed you. It's actually the ladies in the Bible that get the glory. Okay? Because you're the birthing people. And you're the one that has the sincere... Think of heaven feeding. Heaven is our mother. Think of heaven feeding her children with Old Testament and New Testament. Amen? Amen. Stand to our feet. And by the way, you ex-Mormons, no woman, no woman has ever had three. Do you get that? Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon. There are not three breasts on a woman. Father in heaven, you're a genius. 
You're an absolute genius. God, we couldn't even ask you how long it took for you to come up with the precision, the glory, the beauty of this universe that you created. And Father, we stand in awe of the things that we learn from your word and the things, God, that we hear. We stand in awe of it, God, because there's not a chance in the world this Bible was written by men, but by the Holy Ghost. Father, teach us more. Help us, dear God, that when we need comfort, we go back to that comfort. Help us, dear God, that we do need the milk of the Word in certain areas of our life. But that's intended, God, to be a temporary thing. Now, we desire the meat. Father, would you rise and give your people both the milk and the meat that they need in their lives to conquer what it is they need to conquer, to be prepared for the days that are coming because we don't know what's going to happen. So, Father, prepare your people. Give them knowledge, understanding, wisdom of your word. We thank you, Lord, for, so, for showing us great things tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. God bless you.